Welcome back. Despite some year-to-year -year changes, we continue to see a long-term upward trend with our global temperatures. 17 of the last 18 uh, of the warmest years on record have occurred since tw uh, 2001. Uh, joining us now is a NASA scientist, Dr. Um, Doug Morton. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Great, thanks for having me. Uh, now, you guys just recently um, released a report about the 2017 um, global temperatures. Uh, tell us where do those rank among some of the other warmest years? So 2017 was the second warmest year ever recorded and the warmest year that wasn't given a boost from El Nino. So five of the uh, warmest years on record since 2010. And what allows us to know this about our changing planet is our ability to use data from more than 6,000 weather stations. And then here at NASA, we connect the dots to give a global reading of how temperatures have changed. These areas and the warmer colors of oranges and red show the places of our planet that have warmed the fastest, Alaska and the high latitudes in particular. Uh, now, I, I often get this question pretty frequently. I mean, we just had a very cold end to December, beginning of January. How, how, did, how is it possible that we have the second warmest year on record with that cold? So we definitely have weather fluctuations, which will give regions warm and cold spells. But when we look across the entire planet, we're able to understand how increasing energy has really led to an overall change in those average annual temperatures. December 2017 was sort of a tale of two countries in the United States with freezing cold temperatures in the east and hotter than usual temperatures in Southern California, which made it really challenging to battle those wildfires in the Los Angeles area. As we zoom out to the rest of the globe, though, we can see how some of those cold areas in the United States were really offset by record warmth in Alaska, Siberia, and Australia. And this really does just continue the long-term trend of increasing global temperatures that we expect based on how greenhouse gases have made uh, more heat trapping uh, potential in our atmosphere. And uh, another notable thing about 2017 was all the extreme events that we had. Even right here in southwest Missouri, we had um, some record flooding. So how does this kind of go into this larger big picture of the global temperatures? Well, that record flooding in Missouri and the record rainfall from storms like Harvey in Texas or Irma in southern Florida and Maria in Puerto Rico, um, that's all entirely consistent with what we expect in a warmer world where there's more evaporation, there's more rainfall going into those tropical storms and even summer thunderstorms leading to flash flood conditions. And so in a warmer planet, we would expect there to be winners with rainfall, maybe more than you wanted, and losers like regions in California this year that saw unprecedented wildfires. Um, those drought conditions made it challenging to battle wildfires. It also makes those fires more likely. And I would love for you to clarify for us, when we were talking about these uh, temperatures, we're talking about one to two degrees uh, warmer on the globe. How one or two degrees to us may seem very small, how is it significant for the globe? Well, as we add that extra energy to the planet, we're going to be able to do things that we maybe don't want to do, like uh, melt Arctic sea ice. Um, so we've got satellites that are tracking all of the changes, the way that a warming planet and a warming Arctic in particular um, means that those changes, even if they're not where we live, are having a big impact on the globe. So what starts in the Arctic doesn't always stay in the Arctic, especially in terms of sea level rise. Very interesting conversation this morning. Thank you so much, Dr. Morton. Um, we appreciate it. Um, we'll be right back after the break.